We're going to compare aldosterone and ADH, antidiuretic hormone, side by side. And to do this, I think it would be helpful if we just do a little recap on how these two work because it's, it's going to help inform exactly what they do. So if we have a little nephron here, a little tubule, and these are the cells lining the tubule and going to eventually send the urine on its way out. And next to it, I have, let's say, a little blood. Uh, vessel. And just to save myself from drawing it twice, I'm going to just cut and paste this over to this side right here. And in this tubule, we know that on one side we have, uh, on this aldosterone side, we have water permeability. So this uh, membrane that kind of separates the two, or this layer of cells, is water permeable. But over here, we know on the ADH side, this is not water permeable. And the reason I'm saying it's different is because we know that although they look the same, these are different parts of the nephron, right? Different parts of the nephron. And the way that aldosterone works, the main thing it does, is it's going to pull in sodium. And it's going to spit out into the urine potassium. And that's the main activity of aldosterone in terms of capturing sodium. And what happens is that sodium we know is not permeable. Sodium is not permeable to membranes, not able to cross membranes very easily. And that's actually really important because if it can't cross membranes, then it means that it's going to contribute to tonicity because we know that the ions that cannot cross membranes are the ones that are the, are the, the biggest contributors to tonicity. And in fact, this is actually very important because potassium, by comparison, can, I'll say slightly, cross membranes. Can slightly cross membranes. So if you have one ion that cannot cross membranes at all, and you uh, give away the ion that can slightly cross membranes, then your tonicity goes up because overall you're getting uh, more ions that are going to stay in the blood vessel. And because they're able to stay in the blood vessel and can contribute to tonicity, water is going to be driven into the blood vessels. So that's really how aldosterone is dragging water into the blood vessels, through increased tonicity. And by comparison, the ADH is just using water channels. I mean, if water is unable to get across otherwise, if you throw in some water channels, then you have no problem gathering water. So these are the key differences. One of them uses an osmol to drag water across, and that's why we always say sodium or water follows sodium, and the other is just using channels. So let me make a little bit of space here. Um, let's see if we can create some space down here. And I'm going to create two categories. So let's say one category is volume. And the other category is osmolarity. Osmolarity. And we know osmolarity actually is simply a fraction, right? It's just osmoles divided by volume. So the same thing that we have in the other column. And I'm going to do that for this side as well. Osmolarity and osmoles divided by volume. And we're going to actually see how these two work and whether one or both of these things will be affected by the hormones. So we know that the way that aldosterone works is by raising the osmols. It's going to change this. It's going to increase the osmols. And as a result, it's actually going to increase the volume, right? So it's going to increase volume as well. So actually, both osmols and volume are affected. But, and so uh, let me start out by just simply circling this box because we know that the volume is affected. But because osmoles and volume are both affected and that they're proportional to one another, we usually don't think of osmolarity being affected by aldosterone because both the numerator and the denominator are going to go up uh, if there's a lot of aldosterone around or down if there's not any aldosterone around. So osmolarity doesn't really get affected by aldosterone. Now, 
ADH is a little different, right? So in ADH, we have volume going up. That's really the primary thing that's happening. And so we would say, of course, well, we have a volume change here. But in terms of osmols, you haven't really changed the osmols with ADH, not directly. And if you haven't changed the osmoles, and you have changed the volume, then osmolarity is changed, right? If you just change the denominator but not the numerator, then the number will change. And so that's why ADH affects osmolarity, although it doesn't affect osmoles. Kind of a tricky thing, but I think you can see it now uh, that you see the numerator does not change, but the overall fraction does. So you have on this side increased volume, and you have increased volume on this side, and you have decreased osmolarity. So these are the major changes from these hormones. Now let me make a little bit more space and we'll just continue this line of reasoning. So if these are the changes, now imagine a scenario where you want to increase volume. Let's say you want to just, just increase volume, but maintain, you don't want to change the osmolarity. So I'm going to write osmolarity. So if you want to increase volume but maintain osmolarity, which hormone would you, uh, would you use? And let's, uh, because we can't see the hormones now, let's just use aldosterone, aldosterone, and ADH. And I'll just put up arrows and down arrows. So if these are the two hormones, if I want to increase volume, I would definitely use aldosterone because that doesn't affect osmolarity but I would not use any ADH. I'll put um, a little circle with a line through it. I would not use ADH because again, I want to maintain osmolarity. So I would really not want to use ADH in that scenario. Now let's say you wanted to increase volume and I'll write regardless of osmolarity, regardless, meaning you don't really care if osmolarity changes. And this could be like, let's say you have a big car accident and you're bleeding out and the only thing you really care about right away is increasing your blood volume. That's the only thing that matters. So you really want to increase volume and you want to do it fast. Well, in this scenario, you're definitely going to want to use everything available to you, aldosterone and ADH. And the fact that osmolarity will go down with ADH really doesn't matter because we said regardless in this scenario. So because of that, I'm going to employ ADH this time. So you can kind of get a sense for how this is going to work, right? Now let's say I wanted to decrease osmolarity, decrease osmolarity, and I wanted, and let's say regardless of volume, regardless of volume. So I don't really care if the volume changes a little bit here or there. So in this case, regardless of volume, what would I do? Well, if I didn't really care about the volume and I just wanted to decrease osmolarity, well, that seems like a no-brainer, right? That's just, that's exactly what ADH will do. It will decrease osmolarity. And in this case, I don't really need aldosterone, right? Because I said uh, in my question or my um, phrase here that I don't care about volume changes. So that's fine. I'll just use ADH and I'll tolerate the increase in volume. And the fourth scenario is let's say you want to increase osmolarity you want to increase os or decrease osmolarity, I said it backwards. And let's say you want to maintain, you want to maintain volume. You don't want it to go up or down. Well, this is kind of a tricky one, right? Because to decrease osmolarity, well, only one hormone will do that for you. So you got to start with some ADH. But if you want to maintain volume, you know that ADH will cause your volume to go up a little bit. And if you don't want it to go up, you want to maintain volume, you might have to actually decrease aldosterone just a little smidge so that would maintain your volume. Now you can see how the two hormones basically have to work together to get the different outcomes, right? Depending on what your volume status is and what your osmolarity status is. And I could flip around all the arrows, right? I could say, well, what about decreased volume and maintain osmolarity or decreased volume regardless of osmolarity? And you would basically just do the opposite of all these things. So you can see how really any tweak in volume and osmolarity can help you predict what the aldosterone and ADH will be doing.